Welcome to Yana TV. What do we know about uh, public speaking and particularly about winning the world championship in public speaking? Well, today our guest knows everything about the first and the second. Manoj Vasudevan is this year's 2017 world champion of public speaking and he's a management consultant and author of international bestseller, Mastering Leadership the Most the Way. Is it this one? That's Here right. Here it is. That's the book. Exactly. He's the CEO of Third Expression, an organization helping you to express your thoughts clearly, confidently, and convincingly. And he's on a mission to help 20 million people to get out of their fear zone. The man himself, Manash. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming here, Manas. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So, how does it feel now? You are like on top of the world. So, how how is that? It's a good achievement to win the world championship of public speaking, but I'm the same person, okay? I keep saying that trophy is different from who I am. But I really, this is a goal I wanted to achieve. So, having achieved that really makes me uh, feel like someone who accomplished a goal. So, it feels great. Why did you decide even to go for that? Oh, originally I was afraid to speak. I was nervous to <laughs> That's speak. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I'm, I'm a, the typical shy introvert sort of person. You will never see me in the middle of a party being the life of the party. So uh, I was nervous to speak. But as I was doing my consulting business and I realized the importance of speaking up. Uh, so I started to uh, expand on this skill. At some point, one of my mentors told me there's something called the World Championship of Public Speaking. And that was like the big goal. Nobody out of Asia, at least in Singapore, has won the competition. And he asked me to dream big. So this was like a big goal so that I can actually be a better speaker. The objective was to be a better speaker. Not but to win the trophy. <laughs> not to win the trophy. <laughs> but of course, when you start chasing after something, you have this eagerness to win it. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got initially in to this as a big dream. Now I have realized it, but the original intent was to become a better speaker. Well, and I guess with one dream, so why don't you just dream to conquer the world? You know, whatever you do, right? So, that's true. Perfect. That's true. Okay, that's very good. Um, how did the journey started for you towards the, the winning the trophy? Okay, so I first uh, started speaking in audiences as big as 20 when I was about 36 years old. Mm -hmm. All right, because before that, as a child, I was shy. I, I can do little presentations, but I was not um, doing it for passion or uh, apart from work, right? And I was about I was 36 years old when I started speaking in public, as in the audiences I do not know. Mm -hmm. I started off with audience of 20, and um, that's how I started. And then I got really passionate about this. I said, wow, this is amazing. Your ability to influence and uh, connect with people, uh, in a short period of time. And this is a skill I thought I need to learn. So I started doing, not only really speaking, I started doing emceeing, I started doing stand-up comedy. I started stretching myself outside the comfort zone. And the more I stretched out of the comfort zone, I started to grow in that direction. And of course I had mentors and coaches who helped me. I always, one thing I did to write was always ask my audience for feedback. Mm -hmm. And they always told me what I did well and what I could improve. And that was the thing that kept me going. And uh, so I started off as nervous, but now, now the biggest audience I've spoken has 20,000 people in the audience. So I've really grown in that, but I started really small. Yeah. That's a great story of someone who said who was very, very shy and very introverted. Probably you're still introverted. Absolutely. Right? Introverted, yes. <laughs> so, and it's not a crime. I, I truly believe introverts could be the best speakers. I like that. <laughs> uh, well, I, people don't usually guess it about me, but I'm with you on that. Oh, Actually, okay. I am introvert myself. So... Well, maybe another career one day. How, <laughs> how, how we know? <laughs> you sure will be a great speaker. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, so, Manoj, when you won it, and I mean now that you achieve probably one of the most important goals a speaker can have. So, what is next? So, actually, as I said, one of the things I truly believe is anyone can be anyone who can speak can be a speaker. Because it's usually the mental block that prevents us from speaking. So you have no problem speaking with me. I have right? absolutely no problem speaking with but, you. <laughs> <laughs> but there are a lot of people, even TV uh, celebrities, who actually say they can speak on camera, but they can't speak on a stage when people are looking at them. It's just a mental block. Mm. right? So my mission is to help as many people as I can to overcome this mental block and at least take one step outside their fear zone. Mm -hmm. So I have a mission of helping 20 million people to achieve that. That's my next big goal. To use my example 
and my the things I learned in my journey to shorten the learning curve of many other people. So mm. I'm starting an online program called Nervous to Fabulous. It's www.nervoustofabulous.com. I'm uh, preparing a foundational public peace speaking course which is available for free for who for free for free the the foundational <laughs> course is available for free and of course there will be advanced programs a paid program but the objective is get those advanced students to actually spread this message of helping more people to speak i believe the world is in need of good people speaking up mm -hmm. i definitely believe in that too you know and what is also very interesting for me personally the journey that people go on towards success, right? Mm -hmm. So now that you succeeded in whatever you wanted to succeed, for you it was winning, you know, the world championship. Uh, but I know it was also a journey for you. It was like, it was many attempts. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Okay, I have attempted to win the world championship at least six times. Mm -hmm. I've entered the contest six times over a period of seven years. Uh, so, uh, now I'm counting, so maybe eight years, so eight, mm -hmm. eight uh, individual years, from 2010 to 2017. I attempted six times. I have, uh, there are six levels of contest, so it's very intense. 30,000 30, to 35,000 contestants from around the world appear for this contest. Mm -hmm. People from 142 different countries. And there are six levels of contest. You need to win all these levels mm -hmm. to win the World Championship title. So it's very intense. So of course, when you start off, you, you have your apprehensions, doubt, insecurities. and. Um, that's when you need to really push through the most because people give up earlier on because I have had also setbacks. I never, always never did. I was not a good speaker. I've got feedback that I will never be a speaker. I've got feedback. People return to me that stop dreaming. Uh, you can never be an international speaker. You have an accent. I do still have an accent. I, I have an accent too. <laughs> I, 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 I would like to speak on the accent part shortly. You are not funny. Uh, you can't make people laugh. Things like so there are a lot of negative things that happened as well and also the setback of losing contest losing these competition feeling you're not good enough so also to, br to bring yourself up to dream big not only dream big also visualize your success and also keep on building on what you have got and play with the honest chance. so you were visualizing it oh i do visualize it so i uh, the the i i didn't do it right before in the right way. Now I figured out I think I'm doing the right way now. Oh, so they say yeah. right way to visualize. Yes. Can you share it with us? Oh, so, oh, what is the right way to do so it? So I think the visualization <laughs> part, we all, we all talk about that. One of the key thing is uh, visualizing. So for, to give you an example, I start visualizing every single thing that will happen when I win the contest. Me delivering the acceptance speech. Of course, I have my accept acceptance speech ready. Mm -hmm. I, I have I'm visualizing. I'm talking to people. I'm visualizing people clapping. I'm visualizing holding the trophy in my hand. If mm -hmm. you Google me, you see holding my trophy like this. This is exactly how I visualized it. And Embodied experience. Uh, yes, and also feeling <laughs> I'm holding it. I can feel the weight of the trophy, and I'm mm. going to visualizing where it's where it will be. So, and also with the feeling that this is going to happen. Because I truly believe it. Now that's not I do what I do whole day, right? I do it for some time, then of I course. then I get back to work. Then you have to still go <laughs> back and practice. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's very important you say it because I know for a fact that many high performance athletes practice it before big games. Yeah, that's exactly what I read. What you said. I read about that. Well. Yeah, I read about that. I read about a lot of Eastern European countries. Uh, it was discovered in the late 60s or something that they actually do visualize and lot. then it was copied over in the West and everybody everywhere else. Exactly. Because this is a very core skill to have, skill they do. So initially I was doing wrong in the sense I was like not believing it, I was not feeling it. Now when I was visualizing I was just, and I was surprised the way things happen uh, because it was like, oh this is a deja vu. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right? I had it already experienced before. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, so you can use it, guys. You know, visualizing, you, should, you know, yeah. it's, it actually really primes yourself. You can prime yourself. I know, like, even Tony Robbins, who is actually coming to Singapore in 2018, so also talks about it a lot. You know, when you prime yourself, you set your mind for success, mm -hmm. you win. And we have a great example of here. Thank so, you. So, what about the accent? You said you're going to okay. share about it. This is something I'm truly passionate So, even if I go, even if today, after I won the World Championship, People say, how come this guy with an accent won the world championship? So this, this is the thing we need to know. You will, if you know more than one language, you will always have an accent. Mm. If you only know one language, that is your way you speak. But if you know more than one language, you're bound to have an accent. Don't hold yourself back because of your accent. Now in this global world, English is the default language of the world now. Everybody speaks in their own way. Now, 
all you need to do is you need to be clear so when you speak people should understand what you are saying what word you are using the accent just tells them where you are from mm. right <laughs> i love it you know what i mean yes. so don't hold a lot of people oh i have an accent i will now be a speaker no i said just speak but maybe slow down i have also a tendency to speak faster right so one one of the things i do is speak slower and one of the beauty uh, or one of the shortcuts in being clear in english language english language every word has is split into syllables mm-hmm. and if you were to say every syllable and stress on the right syllable people will understand what you're saying so if you guys are speaking really slowly everyone going to understand you <laughs> yes and that's all you need to do of course you, you know more and more you need to get clearer and clearer so sometimes some words i can't say properly because of my accent or because of the nature of the different like i i speak four or five languages like at least in, to a certain extent now what i do is i ask my audience tell me which word you didn't understand mhm so they tell me oh, this word you didn't say professor how do you say it mhm so i learn so i do not go in dictionary and learn all the words mhm i just say it and correct it as i go along mm. you know what i mean I, i just say it so you tell Love me I, i'm open for feedback as you always say feedback is the breakfast for champions you need to take feedback so this i always give paper to the best person i know in the audience who knows english better than me so can you tell me which words i should say better Oh, oh yeah I love it people love to give feedback so okay. <laughs> and that is this free learning for me yes yeah, that's how i correct all as i go along love it you Thank know you. love it so now i know also in 2015 you actually became number 3 in the same competition right yes. so you could have just stopped there but you didn't yeah so why did you keep going for number 1 <laughs> so when i was competing 2015 nobody from singapore has ever gone to the top of the world championship of public speaking i was the first person to get into the top 10 in the world mm. and i had a speech which i truly believed in i delivered well but when the results came out i was world number 3 and it's not bad okay world number 3 is not bad not bad yes. but for me it was not good <laughs> not good enough because i was dreaming to be number 1 so i did, i didn't meet my own expectation of being number 1 so but one my initial response was take i took one year off i didn't compete the, the next year in 2016 but i was like thinking this was like an unfinished goal so i wanted to prove it to myself and to my students by teach that don't give up and uh, go for your goal because it will seem as i have given up to my students mm-hmm. and i thought I, but but again having said that i would have given up also after this year because this was i competed with the belief this is the last time i'm competing and i truly believed i could win it because i was visualizing and doing the hard work and uh, i but i thought this is the last time i can do it so i put all all in effort over 6 months and i know you in fact watched all available speeches since 1986 that's right right to prepare for this year championship that's right what have you learned from that So I have watched speech uh, the the competition type speeches since 1980s I also watch other speakers I always look at why someone did better and why someone didn't fare as good right so I was looking at little things that matter mm-hmm. because at the higher level of competitions and contests and speeches everyone is good mm-hmm. right now there's a little things that matter so I was studying these speeches I figured out that at least five things you need to know one is the story you share should be relatable Mm-hmm. People need to feel ah, I have been had a similar experience, so relatable. Second, the point, the message you share has to be universal. Mm-hmm. That means everybody understand it. So people, one hundred and forty-two countries in the audience, two thousand people from around the world, and so they're watching live. Uh, some ten thousand people watching live, right? So huge stuff. So they need to understand, right? It's universal. So the third thing is, what do you say has to be believable? No, people should believe ah, this thing could happen, right? and the fourth thing is not only believable it has to be actionable they need to after listening to you they need to know what exactly i am supposed to do i heard your story but believe it what what is in it for me mm-hmm. what should i do mm-hmm. so that actionable part has to be clear last but not the least be authentic mm. so you speak with sincerity and conviction you are not trying to impress you are just trying to just inspire by sharing your story right that's the five things love that love that so you watched all of these you prepared and then you i know actually what i wanted to ask also before this championship i think in 2000 is it 15 when you had a story with the woman in the audience 
Oh, that was in 2013. It was 2013, right? Yeah. When a woman walked up to you, when you were also not happy about yeah. the performance That's and true. you felt you probably will never do it again or something. That's true. So in 2013, I did a similar full-hearted attempt to win the World Championship. I spent months on this. I went to US, just in the United States. I went there three, four weeks before to practice perfect, just mount my speech in different audiences. But when I went on stage, my microphone was switched off. And uh, that was like a huge setback. Minor for me. technical error oh, for public speaking world championship. Yes. <laughs> and as for the rules, I'm on my own. You know, there's a human error. Someone forgot to turn on the microphone. I was nice to this person, but eventually, but I was disappointed. I didn't win. I did all the effort, a lot of time, money, and effort. So I says, "What?" I was sitting there. Someone came to me and said, "Manu, the ladies we uh, want to see us. Who, who, who knows me here, right?" There was this uh, visually challenged lady, a blind lady. She was walking with a working dog. She came to me and said, Manoj, your speech made such a difference to me. As I listened to you, I felt like I was in a roller coaster ride with you. Mm. And I was like, wow. That was like the best thing. I what did you have. realize in this moment? You know, At you that know? moment, what I realized was no matter how bad you speak or how bad you perform, there is someone in the audience who wants to hear your message. And even without the trophy, you can make an impact. Mm. Even to people watching this, I said, don't need a trophy. All of we have messages, stories to share and help people. So I started writing for the one person who has to hear my message. And of course, it's universal as well, yeah. And <laughs> so you continued after this. And we had 2015, we went now to 2017. Uh, after all this preparation also, I know that you changed a lot your style, right, for this particular presentation. So what was different this time that you feel really helped you win? Because I've, I've been in the contest and won and I lost. Even when I lost, I realized my message had an impact. Mm -hmm. The people called me and said how the message affected them. They started sharing the emails, sharing the speeches and emailing it to me. So I realized this time I was not competing to win. I wanted to win, but that was not my core focus. I really wanted to win. There's no doubt about it. But that I was not so focused on winning. I knew even if I win or not, I'm going to make an impact. That was the first thing mm -hmm. that I was focused on. Second thing, as we said, I was visualizing my success. I exactly was, I mean, even, even I used to play back a line which said, the 2017 world champion of public speaking is Manoj Vasudevan when has the announcement coming, right? So I just kind of, I like psyching myself. Wow, you're really <laughs> priming yourself, <laughs> to, to man. To believe that this is going yes. to come. That, that really, I believe, helped me. And, uh, and I, again, I was not trying to be perfect. I was just focused on connecting with the audience and improving myself as a speaker. Uh, so these are some of the little things I would have done for this year differently. Oh, also one more thing I did this year was I went back to basics. Yes. I went back to basics is because sometimes you do something for a long time. You start feeling, oh, I know this, I know. This time I did something totally different. I went back to basics. I started reading books on public speaking to go to the basics to look at what are the elements of well, so I have my own notes I also have systems I teach people but I also start looking at what other people are teaching so went back to basics then one thing emerged was I need to connect with people emotionally earlier I had a lot of humor I reduced the humor and start working uh, on the emotion of people mm -hmm. which really worked for me spending so many years now in the speaking industry and also now being the world champion of the public speaking what message do you have for speakers now, I, I figured out, so I figured out there are three milestones in public speaking. Mm -hmm. The first milestone, stone, I call it me, M-E, me. So when a lot of people, when they first start to speak, they're so focused on themselves, me. Oh, how do I look? What will they say? What will they think? What if I do not do well? Mm -hmm. What will happen to me, right? So it's all about me. That's the first milestone. That's one reason most people will never even try to be a public speaker, mm -hmm. right? And now the second milestone is what I call message. Message is when you feel like, I need to say something very important. I need to say something nobody has said before. I need to stand out. So there's also an element of me in that uh, second mm -hmm. milestone. The third milestone is when you really connect with any audience. And when you reach this milestone, you're not worried about yourself. You're not worried about message. You're more worried about the audience. This milestone is called the messenger. That means you come here as a messenger, believing that these people who are, who are listening to you intently, and I'm going to give them value, 
by sharing what i learned give so me some examples basically that you learn, relate to. they basically learn and share yeah. give me example all the philosophers yeah. and prophets and people people admire they are always messengers if you look at jesus christ jesus christ was not god he was son of god mm-hmm. right so he is passing his message mm-hmm. and people attached he is not attached to his the uh, to build himself up you look at uh, uh, lord buddha mm-hmm. lord krishna they all actually uh, buddha as well he is actually speaking about a concept and he said you can also be like me if you follow my path mm-hmm. so he is not saying i am special mm-hmm. uh, prophet muhammad he is a messenger so now if you look at different religions and i'm not saying everyone is uh, i'm not comparing religions mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. but even if you look at non religious figures like mahatma gandhi if you ask him what's your message he said my life is my message mm-hmm. so he is a messenger he also says you can be like me and this is effective because he learns and he shares we all learn and share and as long as you appear as a messenger you connect with the audience so you're not trying to build yourself up so my message is let go of ego let go of ego you are not as important as you think you are as a speaker because you're only in service and when you're in service there is no fear and if you let go of, of your ego you can go very far in this industry because people are looking for people are authentic unbiased and willing to serve the audience so that that will be one message i love it this is so i'm like ah so strong <gasps> hmm you know what in this interview usually what i like to show is the good the bad and the ugly okay, okay? so we talk about the great stuff we talk about not so great stuff share with me maybe one moment that you found was the most challenging for you on your journey towards where you are today Uh, one of the biggest challenge was every year i you i whenever i'm competing i comp- over 8 years i competed six times it takes a lot of time energy and money right mm-hmm. it takes time off my work things i do so it takes a lot of intense preparation struggle so the challenging moment is when you start to have self doubt why am i doing this but i usually typically had the belief of winning every time but of course i didn't win all the time but i had the belief but also it's also intense emotions of uh, the need of working hard and also to build a support ecosystem of uh, getting things done at this point of the, at those points of the journey there are people who actually act as detractors who say oh as i said you can now be a speaker what are you doing what are you are you pick a fool nobody in singapore has ever gone that far what are you do you know you need to first if i fix your accent before you can speak so people cast doubt so there this is a challenging moment where you need to take i take in all the opinions but i make my own decisions right mm. so that part is the challenging part i love it take other people's opinion but make your own decision that's great thank you <laughs> so that having said that of course you get affected but you need to look, get a way of constantly focusing on your goals and working towards your dreams and here we are today now you hold it okay. and so you won now you're going forward so I know you're on a mission to change the world in your own way. So tell me about that. How do you want to change the world? I'm not here to change the world. I'm just going to share a message. Mm-hmm. My message is uh, people who are shy and introverted can be good speakers because in base because I coach people around the world. I coach people on the overcome their fear. I coach the senior executives and C-level executives be have executive presence, present in front of people. I help people to build their networks. So I actually help people in five four steps: connect, communicate, network, lead, and sell. And that's a part of my book. Mm-hmm. You probably read mm-hmm. this. So the five four skills mm-hmm. you have to connect with people, to communicate, to network, to um, lead, and to influence. As in, sell your ideas, get people on your side. So this is five. I believe anyone can learn it if they put their mind and heart on it. And my role is to facilitate them, and that's what I do in coaching. And I also help people to get to the next level in their career or organization or business. and the the my work in the the bigger project the, the main project or the big project i'm working on is to help 20 million people to at least take one step outside the fear zone that's why i put up this website www.nervoustofabulous.com i'm working with collaborators or investors who can come and help my venture so that i i believe if i can get this message to as many people as i can i believe they are going to take, take that step and my contribution to the world is helping many people to do take that step and hope more people join me in the movement and help me help this make a reality help mm. make this a reality yeah what is your biggest dream and right now my biggest dream is this mm-hmm. to uh, get help these many people 20 million people 
He was saying, oh, it's so big. The number is so big. I said, I believe I can get people together to get this happen. Okay, I don't have uh, all the resources I need mm -hmm. now. Honestly, mm -hmm. I don't have all the resources. And also, when I started public speaking, I didn't have all the resources to win the World Championship public speaking. Nobody in my school would have looked at me and said, this guy on day. So, that's, I understand, but I'm also working towards how working with people who are smarter and uh, ahead of me in this journey. They are guiding me. I'm taking all the help I can get, bringing together and getting closer to my thing. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. And uh, that was Manoj Vasudevan with us here today, world champion in two, of public speaking in 2017. And for you guys, remember that if even someone comes along and says you can't do this, this is not the truth. Just keep believing in your dream, go for this and take one step at a time, learn from your mistakes and who knows, one day you might just hold that trophy that you're dreaming about. We talk to you next time. One thing I like about Yana is the amount of information, stories and experiences she has traveling the world, interacting with people around the world. And I see a lot of stories in her. And if the world ha can listen to her stories, the world will be a different place. I highly recommend her to be a speaker at your event.